Got another test yourself A level chemistry video here. This one's for year 12 enthalpy changes. And if you like this type of video, the link to the playlist that it's in should be at the top of the screen now. Okay, so as normal, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So click on the link, have a go at the questions and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so first question, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction here using these average bond enthalpies. So I say to my students, this would be classed as an in minus out method. That's what I call the method we're going to use. So there's uh, two steps to do. First of all, first thing you've got to do is work out the energy that has to be supplied to break the bonds in these reactants here. So we've got two moles of um, the CH bond there and there. So we double that and we add to that the enthalpy change to break that bond there. So there's one mole of those and we've got two and a half moles of the OO double bond. So two and a half times 498 and that gives us a total of 2912. We then work out the energy that comes out when the bonds in the products are formed. So we've got two moles of OH bonds, or so 464 times 2. And we've got four moles of C double bond O. So there's two in the molecule, but there's two moles made. So four times 805. So the total energy that's released when the bonds form, 4148. And then here's the in minus out bit. To calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction, it's the in this minus the out, so that one there, and we get an answer of minus, I've highlighted that because you must include the sign, so it's an exothermic reaction obviously, minus 1236 kilojoules per mole. Question two, not possible to measure the enthalpy change of formation of N2O directly, suggest why it's not possible. So there's three answers I can think of that you could give, uh, you only obviously have to give one of these. So if you reacted N2 and O2, you could get you could get other oxides of nitrogen, or you could um, you could say that the activation energy is too high. That's fine, or you could say that the rate of the reaction was too low. So any of those three would be accepted. Now I've included this question in this pack of questions because it sort of allows me to explain a, a slightly different way to tackle. Um, an enthalpy change calculation. So we've got to calculate using these two um, values, these two values here, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of formation for N2O. So if you think of the definition, it's the enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements. So the equation effectively is that. So to make one mole of N2O, we need a mole of N2 gas and a mole of, oh, sorry, half a mole of O2 gas. So this is actually the way I was taught to do enthalpy change calculations uh, quite a long time ago now. So what I'm looking for are the, um, the species, the things in my equation, in the equation supplied. So we need an N2, a mole of N2 gas, in our equation that we're trying to make. There it is there but it's on the wrong side of the equation, okay? And the other thing you'll notice is we also need, to on the right-hand side, we need a mole of N2O as a product. There it is there in the same equation, one, but it's on the wrong side. So it's a, it's a reactant in that one, but we need it to be a product, and likewise for this. So effectively, what we need to do is we need to have the reverse of equation one. You'll notice I've numbered the two equations, one and two. So we need to flip this equation round basically and we do that by sticking a minus sign in front of it. The next thing we need is we need half a mole of O2 as a reactant. Well we've got it there, look in equation 2. It's on the correct side of the arrow so we just add that to um, the reverse of equation 1. Okay. So basically if you flip this equation round, the CO and the N2 go on the left, so CO plus N2. They go on the right, C and N2O, C and N2O. So they're in the correct on the correct sides now for the equation we want. And then this one here is just added. So everything stays as it is. So plus C plus a half O2. And then CO as a react as a product, sorry, on that side. And then you can see what I've done there. I've cancelled out like terms 
and look at what we're left with. We're left with that. So if we do that to the equation, the species in the equations, then we do that to their enthalpy change values. So minus equation one is minus minus 193 plus equation two, so it's plus minus 111. And again, we've got to include the sign, so it's plus 82. Question three starts off with the definition for the enthalpy change of combustion, not the standard enthalpy change of combustion. So you can see I've starred that there. It hasn't said standard enthalpy change of combustion. So all we need to say is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is reacted completely in oxygen. So moving on to the calculation now. So if we look at the information given, we've got a mass of compound I. It's heating up a certain quantity of water and it's changed the temperature. So that is, and it's going to be an MC delta T calculation. So the first thing I've got to do is calculate the energy released in kilojoules um, in this experiment. And we're told the specific heat capacity is 4.18 for water. So Q equals MC delta T. So it's just 50 times 4.18 times the difference in the temperatures, 33.8. We get an answer in joules. And then we have to divide by a thousand to get it into kilojoules. So 7.06 to three significant figures. Got to work out the moles of compound I. So it's MR from that molecular formula is 268. Mass over MR gives us that many moles of I. And then the enthalpy change of combustion at 7.06 kilojoules divided by the moles. And don't forget the minus sign because the temperature of the water went up. So it's exothermic minus 1413. And in the mark scheme, minus 1412 was accepted as well. It just depends how you've rounded things. Question four now, it's another MC delta T calculation, but this time we're not um, sort of burning a substance to heat up a quantity of water. We're carrying out a reaction where a solid and an aqueous substance react together and the solution in this case heats up. So we've got um, a volume and concentration of copper sulfate and we're told that the magnesium's in excess. So because the magnesium's in excess, the calculation is going to be based around the moles of copper sulfate. So that's obviously going to be the limiting reagent. OK, so we've got same as before, same sort of steps. Q equals MC delta T, so the energy released by the reaction itself. The mass of the solution uh, is going to be 25 grams. 25 cm cubed, but we're told the density is 1 gram per cubic centimetre. Multiplied by its specific E capacity, which is the same as water, and the temperature change 41.5. So we get an answer in joules, divide by 1,000, put it into kilojoules. The moles of copper sulphate, remember that's the limiting reagent, concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. So we've got that many uh, moles of copper sulphate, and then delta H, Q over moles, kilojoules divided by moles, and it's minus again because the, the solution got hotter, 346.96, but we've got to do it to three significant figures, minus 347. Next part of the question, the student weighed out enough magnesium so that it would be in excess by at least 25%. We've got a two decimal place balance. What's the minimum mass of magnesium for it to be in 25% excess? So if you think about the equation, we've got a one to one mole ratio between magnesium and copper sulfate. So you can see down here, we worked out the moles of copper sulfate. So if it was a one to one ratio, if, it was, if we had exactly the right amount of magnesium, we'd need 0.0125 moles of magnesium. But we want it to be in excess by at least 25%. So we need to multiply the moles by 1.25. So there'd be that many moles of magnesium with it being in that much of an excess. And then all we need to do is multiply by the MR to get the mass of magnesium. So it comes out to calculate the value of that. And to two decimal places because of that balance, it's 0.38 grams. Now, I reckon that's worth two marks. So I've just written the example. It's been a bit mean with that one. Okay, so all of that for one mark. Part B now. So we've got to give the definition for the standard enthalpy. So notice it says standard now. And we've got to include the standard conditions for the enthalpy change of combustion. 
So it's the same as before, but with the standard conditions on. So enthalpy change when one mole of a substance reacts completely in oxygen and at 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C, 100 kilopascals or 100,000 pascals. And now the final part of the question, there's various ways you can do this. I'm going to show you the simple way to do it, which I've got here. I've got a cycle on the other, um, on the next page, which I'll show you in a second. You could even do it that sort of equation way that I did for the N2O question at the start. I'm not going to go through that, but you could do it that way as well. Okay, so we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction, which is the enthalpy change of formation of non-N. That's non-N. So you can see we've got one mole of a substance, non-N, being formed from its elements. Okay, so we're calculating delta HF, but the important thing is we are using enthalpy changes of combustion. Okay, so that's the important thing to bear in mind when you decide which method you're going to use. Okay, so we're using delta HCs. So the way I remember it is if we're using delta HC, it's R minus P. And then a nice easy way to remember it, if you just think C for combustion, and then if you turn that into a little A, you spell out the word crap, which I think helps remember. So if we're using delta HC, it's R minus P. The reactants minus the products enthalpy changes. Okay, so all we do is nine times the enthalpy change of combustion for carbon plus ten times the enthalpy change of combustion for hydrogen. So we add all that together and we subtract from that the enthalpy change of combustion of the product, which is that, and you get minus 281. Again, don't forget that sign. So just a quick look at the cycle method if you've done it this way. So there's that equation again. So I've got a pink arrow across there to represent the enthalpy change of formation of non-in. And then if you combust everything in this equation, you get uh, nine moles of CO2 and 10 moles of water. So you can see that you can create a second route going that way there, okay? So if you look at the way the arrows are working, We've got this arrow here, which is in the correct direction for this alternative route. So what you could do is sum the enthalpy changes of combustion of these reactants, because that arrow is in the right direction. And then if you look at the combustion of the product, non in you can see that its combustion arrow is in the wrong direction for the route. So what we do is we flip the sign and that effectively reverses it. So what we're doing is to calculate the delta HF, it's the sum of the combustion of the reactant minus, so that's that flipping around of that, the combustion of the product. And then if you put the numbers in, you get exactly the same answer.